Hey, I'm Lauren from TasteFeasy.tv and in this video I'm going to be benching the new Intel 8-core i7-5960X and 6-core 5820K and then also comparing them to X79 and Z97. Now originally with this video I had planned to do 14 benchmarks and do like a section where I talk about the CPU architecture, talk about a section where I talk about the X99 chipset, um, a section where I talk about DDR4 memory and comparing it to DDR3 memory and just kind of doing initial kind of reviews of all of these things and just kind of trying to go into detail and everything. But everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Like, just to name two things, I got a memory, a stick that arrived that was dead on arrival. I had a motherboard decide to brick itself because it just didn't want to live in this world anymore. Um, and, you know, so yeah. And then also, like, I only got the 5820K a couple of days ago, so I didn't have hardly as much time as I wanted to spend with that CPU and get the benching done. And then also, as I didn't get the CPUs from Intel themselves, I had no idea what the specs were until I put them on the test bench, and it turned out that I had two 5960Xs, which is pretty epic. Um, but yeah, so, this video is not that video that I'd had planned. This is very, this is just like a benching video now. Um, benchmarks but hopefully you know it will still allow you to see how x99 performs and how ddr4 performs compared to x79 z97 and ddr3 um but kind of the test bench specs i will write in the description below but also firstly for x79 we've got sandy bridge e3820 processor um which i tested at stock and then also the ivy bridge e 4820k processor which i um, tested at both stock and overclocked and i should say that with the overclocks i they were the highest stable overclock that i could get them to stress testing on ada 64 for two hours um but then for Z97, I went with a Devil's Canyon i7-4790K, once again testing both overclocked and stock. And then for X99, um, I tested the um, 5960X and 5820K. And then these, I did this across the three deluxe boards, as you can see. So it's kind of like a deluxe show off, the X99 Deluxe, X79 Deluxe and Z97 Deluxe. Um, and then with the memory, for DDR3, I use 16 gig of 1866 megahertz Corsair Dominic Platinums, and for DDR4, I use 16 gig of 2666 megahertz uh, Vengeance LPXs. Um, so let's get started. <laughs> So before we get onto the benchmarks themselves, I wanted to really quickly just cover all of the overclocks that I got, and obviously you can see them here, but I should say these were all kind of really simple, just multiplier only overclocks. I couldn't touch the Uncore, the base clock, um, the VCCIN, the VCCSA, etc. I just left that kind of all as it was because I really just didn't have a lot of time. Um, I had, you know, like nowhere near as much time as I wanted with these CPUs. Um, even though I kind of did notice that with the Haswell E processors, if you played with the base clock, you could push them higher. So firstly with the 5960X, I found with this that I was able to get it stable at 4.4 GHz at 1.35 volts, which is actually a pretty bad overclock for a 5960X. It's, it falls into kind of the category of CPUs that have lost the silicone lottery. Um, I did find though with the second 5960X which, when I found that I had that which was actually really funny because at the time the BIOS version that I had was so new that I was having kind of troubles with it and every few days I was getting sent like a new BIOS version. Um, when I put in what I thought was a 5820K it was telling me that it was a 5960X and I was like the BIOS thinks this is a 5960X and then CPU said also thinks it's a 5960X so I'm like this is just crazy it's like very drunk, <laughs> and then I realised it was a 5960X, which is pretty epic. Um, I already said that. I'm sorry. It's just, you know, I've got two late cars. <laughs> um, but yeah, so this second 5960X looked as if it could do, you know, 4.5, 4.6 gigahertz at 1.3 volts, but, or 1.31 volts, I should say, sorry. But I just, you know, didn't have anywhere enough time to kind of play with it and see what it would actually be stable at. And I decided anyway to keep with all the original benchmarking results that I got with the first 5960X, firstly, you know, to save time, but also just to kind of show you, you know, because not everyone's going to be lucky when it comes to the silicone lottery. And this, I suppose, is kind of a more of a kind of a real world test seeing as usually engineering samples um that reviewers get are you know overclock kind of better than your the average ones that you can buy 
With the 5820K, with this I found that no matter how many volts I chucked at it, it just couldn't be stable at 4.7 gigahertz at all. So the highest stable overclock it was there was at 4.6 gigahertz. I can't really say at what volts though, I because you know I only got the 5820K like two days ago and I really want to get this video up for NDA today and I only finished the testing for the CPU at like a couple of hours ago at 4am this morning. So I... I basically, the first I, the first fecal that it was stable at, at 4.6 gigahertz, I just went with it. I was just like, I can worry about getting the volts down later. It's stable at 4.6 gigahertz for two hours. I'm just going to benchmark it at this. I obviously kept an eye on the temps and made sure that it wasn't like overheating or throttling or anything. But um, And that is the thing with X99. If you are going to be overclocking, you do want to make sure you've got a good cooler, like at least a H100i or, you know, like a 240 all-in-one, a different 240 all-in-one liquid cooler or better. Also, before I move on to the benchmarks, I want to just really quickly cover um, or touch on the PCI lanes. And I say this because for all these tests, um, or the X99 tests, I'm using the X99 Deluxe, which for the 40 lane 5960X, and I'm assuming the 5930K, will run the two 3 gig 78 Poseidons that I used in these tests. Well, the 5930K would if I had one, um, at 16x, 16x. Whereas the 28 lane 5820K will only run them at 16x, 8x. And I thought I should just cover this because while there will be some people who don't care, there will also be some people who do. And also there are motherboards out there like the X99 EWS board, which by using two PLX chips can run your GPUs at 16x regardless of what CPU you use. So even if you've got 4-way SLI on a 5820K, it will still run them all at 16x, 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 16x. And I'd actually really love to do like a big comparison on the difference between CPU lanes and added lanes just to see... Um, kind of what performance difference it made if it did at all, but I suppose you probably wouldn't, there would probably wouldn't be a big enough FPS gap between the results to really kind of determine or kind of give a verdict on the result. And then finally, we're on to the benchmarks. And firstly, we've got 3D Mark Firestrike Extreme. And with all the test results, I've grouped them by motherboard chipset to make it easier to compare. And I've got X99 in the middle, so you can just look up to compare it to X79 and look down to compare it to Z97. But 3D Mark Firestar Extreme is a synthetic benchmark, um, so it should give you kind of an idea of the game performance you'd get. And as you can see by the results, it still mainly comes down to your graphics power, and you would see more of a performance gain um, kind of upgrading your GPU than you would upgrading your CPU. And also you can see even like with the overclock CPUs, you still didn't see a massive gain from that. I have to say though, with 3D Mark to begin with, it was very buggy and it was having like issues detecting things etc and I had to run it quite a few times to get it to start running right and I found that with quite a few of the utilities or benchmarks I wanted to originally include in this video. So if you are planning to go to X99, I'd recommend maybe waiting a little bit unless you're okay with things being a little bit odd until everything gets upgraded. But yeah, so honestly, if you are going to be getting, you know, a mid to high end PC, then I'd really recommend trying to spend kind of as much of your budget on graphics power as possible. Possible. So then for the second game benchmark, I ran Metro Last Light, which isn't the newest game, so you might kind of see like a different pattern of results with newer games, but for this I ran the inbuilt benchmark and then I was able to just kind of leave that running while I went off to film bits for the 380 case review and X99 EWS motherboard video that I'm working on at the moment. Um, but with this, you can see that there's a bit of a performance difference between the Sandy E3820 and the 5960X, but I'd probably say not enough to warrant upgrading. Unfortunately, I don't have anything higher resolution than 1080p for kind of all of these tests, but I'm hoping to get a 4K IPS uh, monitor from Acer soon to be able to do benchmarks in 4K from then on, as sadly the 2560 by 1440 monitor that I used in the GPU feast had to go back, which was very sad as 1080p just hasn't been the same since. And then moving away from gaming benchmarks, we've got Fry Render or Fry Bench. Um, and I really do love this test as not only is it really quick to run, but it allows you to see the rendering performance of your CPU, which, you know, as a content creator is something that's very important to me. Um, but as you can see with the 5960X overclocked 4.4 gigahertz, it managed to do the test in two minutes, which I think is a pretty epic time. And I was actually very surprised by how well the entry level, well, I say entry level, 5820K did. Um, and I, especially as I imagine that it's only going to be probably about £300, um, in the UK anyway. So what I'll probably do when I inevitably have to send these Haswelly processors back is probably actually pick up a 5820K for my own rig to, you know, help with rendering, which obviously will be kind of easier for me to do because I don't need to then splash out on the awful memory and an X99 board as well. 
But I'd love to know what all of you guys get in Fry Render or Fry Range, like the scores you get in the time you get. So post that in the comments below along with the specs of your rig so I can kind of see how different rigs compare. And then after that, we've got Cinebench. And before we take a look at the graph itself, I just wanted to kind of show you um, some real-time performance. And on the left is the 4790K at stock, and on the right is the 5960X at stock. And you can just see just kind of how insane the 5960X is at this. I mean, it is so much faster than the 4790K that it can nearly lap it, which is just pretty epic. And I might, you know, accidentally just kind of lose these CPUs at some point and just not be able to send them back. I mean, who knows? I mean, you know, who knows what will happen between now and that point? Any Anything could happen to them. They could just mysteriously disappear. And I, I wouldn't be to blame, would I? I mean, no. <laughs> it's so much faster. And then we actually have the graph of Cinebench itself. And I should say that with these results, well, with all the results, really, there's no kind of real way to tell what percentage is from having the newest CPU and what percentage of the result or kind of from the performance increase is from having the faster DDR4 memory. But comparing the 5820K at stock to the 4820K, you can really see how much of a difference there is between X99 and X79. And depending on how expensive the 5820K ends up being, I can see a lot of people buying it. Like a lot of people just lusting for the 8 core 5960X, but actually picking up the 5820K because it's just, you know, closer to people's price range. But in future videos, I am planning on doing some benchmarks where I test for clock for clock performance and also um, at different memory speeds, which will be interesting. And then after that, we've got Sony Vegas. And what I did for this was run a five minute time lapse build, which I filmed for a video about a month ago, which I really should finish and upload <laughs> somewhere. Um, but anyways, I apologise for all the rendering tests. It's just that um, for me, obviously, you know, as I said before, being a content creator, not only was this what I was really curious about, but depending on how well the CPUs do at rendering is kind of my incentive for going um, for upgrading. Because at the moment in my gaming rig, um, seeing as I can only game at 1080p at the moment, I'm perfectly happy using either the 4770K or the 4790K, depending on which one's free to, for me to use in my rig at the time. But in a workstation build, the 5960X will save you a considerable amount of time and, you know, over the lifespan of the chipset, may end up paying for itself. And then lastly, we've got power consumption. These are all really rough readings though, as I'm only using one of those cheapy power monitors that you can pick up from Maplin. But for this test, I had the CPU run 100% load for 5 minutes, and then I took the average wattage from a 30 second interval. For these tests, I did leave the GPU idling because I wanted them to focus more on, you know, how much power the CPU used. And obviously an 8-core and a 6-core CPU use more power than a 4-core CPU, but core for core, they don't actually use as much power as I was expecting. And, you know, if as long as you're careful with how much power the rest of the parts use in your rig, you should be able to go with quite a low wattage PSU. So those are my kind of initial benchmarks on X99. Um, if you want productivity or, you know, you've got like a workstation, then the 5960X and 5X20Ks are just beasts. But I do think that if you, you know, if you're just going to be gaming with your rig, honestly, I just stick with Z97. Um, but I'm going to be doing more videos on X99 and I'm going to be doing a separate review on DDR4 memory, hopefully a separate review on CPU. I'm going to be doing an overview or review of the X99 Deluxe, I haven't decided yet, um, of the Rampage 2, of the Corsair DDR Dominant Platinums, all sorts. There are loads more X99 videos to come. Um, so, you know, let me know what you think in the comments below of X99, um, if you think it's worth upgrading to, you know, let me know what you thought of the video, um, and if you like the video, hit the like button, I don't know if I've already said that, um, uh, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and you want to see any of the videos that I just mentioned that I'm going to plan on making eventually, um, and thanks for watching.